Welcome to this YSL Excel VBA tutorial. In this video, we're going to look at how to save attachments from a collection of emails in an Outlook folder. We'll start with a quick recap of how we loop through the items in a folder to identify the mail item objects. Then we'll look at how to identify the emails which have attachments before we look at then how to loop through the attachments collection of each email. We'll show you the simple code required to save an attachment and then mention why you might need to consider creating unique file names. And we'll wrap up the video by looking at how to use file system objects to automatically create a set of output folders so that you can group all of the attachments in a single email in a single folder. So let's get started. To get started, you'll need a collection of emails containing attachments. I'm going to use the set of emails in the Dell folder of my Outlook account. You'll also need some kind of folder to store the attachments we're going to save. I've created a folder called Outlook Files in the root of my C drive. And you'll also need a blank Excel workbook. I've opened up the Visual Basic Editor and in here we can insert a module in the usual way. And we can create a quick subroutine called Save Outlook Attachments. Next, we can set a reference to the Outlook object library in the usual way by heading to Tools, choosing References, and then scrolling through the list to find Microsoft Outlook. When you've found it, you can check the box next to its entry and then click OK. And then we've got all the code to write to loop over a collection of emails. Now, we've done this several times in recent videos, so we'll just skip over the basics for now. Let's declare a variable called OL, which will hold a reference to an Outlook application. We'll have another variable called ns, which will hold a reference to an Outlook namespace. Another variable to hold a reference to an Outlook folder, which I'll reference as fol. And then we need to loop over the collection of items in that folder. So we'll have a generic variable called i as an object type. And then finally, we'll have a variable called mi as a specific outlook.mail item class. We can then start setting what those variables reference. So let's set ol equals new outlook.application. Then we can set ns equals ol.getNamespace. And the only available namespace, as you'll know if you've watched the previous videos in this series, is called Mappy. And then we can set a reference to the Dell folder by saying set fol equals ns.folders1 dot folders, and then the name of the folder that we want to reference, in this case, Dell. We can now use a for each loop to process the items in the folder we've referenced. So I'm going to say for each i in fol dot items. I'll close the loop just so that I don't forget to do that later. Then the first thing I'd like to do within the loop is check what the class of each item is. So I'm going to say if i dot class equals ol mail. Then I am going to set a reference in my mi variable. I'll say set mi equals i. This just guarantees that I'm looking at an email object rather than any other potential type of item that could be in this folder. Just to reassure myself that I'm looking at the correct list of items at this point, I'm going to say debug.print and then some basic information about each email. Let's go with something like mi.sendername and then mi.receivedTime. And finally, let's just make sure I've ended my if statement. Just nearly forgot to do that. We can view the immediate window at this point and then run the subroutine and just reassure ourselves that we are looking at the correct list of emails. Now we'd like to access the attachments belonging to each email. And we can do that by using the attachments property. One simple thing we can do within our debug.print statement is say mi.attachments.count just to see how many there are. If I clear the contents of the immediate window and then run the subroutine again, we can see clearly now how many attachments each individual email has. Now this is useful information because of course we only want to do something to those emails which have attachments. So the ones that have zero attachments we can ignore completely. What we can do here is write an if statement which checks the value of the attachments count property. So we can say if mi.attachments.count is greater than zero, then we can just use our debug.print statement, add another end if, and then clear the contents of the immediate window again, run the subroutine again, 
and there we can see we're only processing the emails which actually have attachments. Bearing in mind that each email object can have a number of attachments, the next thing we'd like to do is loop through the attachments collection. And we can do that in the standard way using a simple for each loop. Let's declare another variable. I'm going to call mine dim at as outlook.attachment. And after I've printed out the information about the email which contains the attachments, I'm going to add another for each loop. I'll just give myself a bit of space there. So we can say for each at in mi.attachments, and then we can give another set of blank lines and say next at. Inside here, all I'm going to do is debug.print some information about each attachment. So debug.print, uh, I'll start with a VB tab character actually, just to give myself a bit of a neater layout in the immediate window. Then I can say at dot and have a look at what properties I have access to. I'll start with maybe the display name or the file name. We'll use the file name shortly when we want to save the attachment. Let's go with display name first. We could also go with, say, at.size, so we know how big it is in bytes. There's a type property there as well. There's various other properties you can have a play around with uh, in your own time. But just to demonstrate what this will return, if I clear the contents of the immediate window again, and then run the subroutine again, I'll make sure that I have the correct one selected. There we go. You can now see the names of the attachments belonging to each individual email object. At this point, adding the code to save each attachment is fairly trivial. Rather than just debug.printing each attachment, we can say at.save as file. If I type in a space after that, I need to know the full path to use to save the file. So what we're going to do is reference the folder that I created earlier on, c colon backslash outlook files. So we can simply hard code that uh, as a constant c colon backslash outlook files. Uh, not that it's case sensitive, but I, I couldn't leave that with a, with a capital letter U in there. Uh, I'll need a backslash and then I can concatenate that string with the file name of the attachment. So I can say at.filename. Having done that, all I need to do now, if I just comment out my debug.print statements just to save the immediate window uh, cluttering up, if I run the subroutine and then have a look in my Outlook files folder, there are all the attachments that I've looped over and saved. One thing you need to be slightly careful of when saving all the attachments to a single folder is if attachments in different emails have the same name. If I have a quick look back at the immediate window, you might be able to see if I scroll down towards the end, there we go, I've got two attachments in two separate emails that have exactly the same name. Now if I looked at the output folder, of course I've only got one version of that file, so uh, the old version gets replaced with a new version, it's, re it's saved over without any warning or confirmation. So there are several approaches we could take to solving that. One would be perhaps to attach some kind of unique information to the file name, perhaps the time it was received, so that it creates a unique file name. Alternatively, we could create a separate folder for each email and save each attachment from a single email in a separate folder. And that would help when we have multiple attachments to the same email. Let's have a quick look first though at adding in some unique file name information. So I'm going to go back to my code and then before I include the file name to the end of the folder path I've written there, I could also include the time received of the email that the attachment belongs to. Now the time received contains some characters like a forward slash character and the colon character, and these, these are characters you might not necessarily want to have in a file name and some of which may well be illegal in a file name as well. So what we'll do is we'll apply the format function so we get a simplified version of the time received. So I'm going to use the format function to format the mi.received time. And then the format that I'd like to apply to this, I'll go from the larger increment of time to the smaller. So I'm going to go for years first, four y's, then a little dash, two m's, another dash and two d's, followed by a space, then two h's for hours, a dash, two m's for minutes. You can also use n's for minutes if you want to distinguish more clearly between minutes and months. Uh, that's entirely up to you. And then another dash and then a couple of s's for the seconds. I will close the double quotes there and then close the parentheses. 
I might like to have a bit of a space between the time and the file name. I could include that within my format code there. And then if I run the subroutine again, what we should see this time if I look back at my Outlook files is that we get all eight files that we should be getting rather than just the seven. So we've got unique versions of the UK DHS English PDF file. So this technique works to make sure that we get unique file names, but it doesn't solve the problem of grouping together all the attachments from a single email. To solve that, what we'll do is add some code to create a new folder for each email using the Microsoft scripting runtime. Just while I'm here, I'm going to highlight all of these files and then just delete them to clear the contents of that folder. We could add some code to do that as well, I suppose. But let's deal with creating the folders in the first place. If we head back to the Visual Basic Editor, then we can head to the Tools menu, choose References, and then this time we're going to look for something called a Microsoft Scripting Runtime. Now this is something we've covered in more detail in other videos in this series. So again, I'm not gonna go into a huge amount of detail here other than to show you how to use this to create new folders. So Microsoft Scripting Runtime, click OK, and then let's scroll back to the top and declare the extra variables we'll need. First of all, we'll need something called a file system object. So I'm going to declare a variable called FSO as scripting, which is the name of the new library we've just referenced, dot file system object. The next thing I'd like to do is declare a variable which holds a reference to the folder that we'll create. Now, unfortunately, we've already used fol as an Outlook folder. So I'm going to call this one DIR, short for directory, as scripting dot folder. Now we can create a new instance of the file system object class by saying set FSO equals new scripting dot file system object. Uh, just for the purposes of the video, you can almost think of a file system object as an invisible version of a Windows Explorer window. It allows you to manipulate files and folders, loop over them, create new ones, delete ones, rename them, move them, copy them, etc. So everything pretty much that you can do in a Windows Explorer window, you can write code using the file system object to replicate. Now that we have this file system object, we can use it to create a new folder for each email that has some attachments. So we're going to go down to the if statement, which checks if the count of attachments is greater than zero, I'd like to say FSO dot create folder. And then what I have to do is construct the name of the folder that I want to create. I think this will make sense if we do it in a separate variable first. There's some things we'll need to do to make our folder name valid and unique. So let's create a separate variable to allow us to construct the name of the directory. I'll create a variable called dir name as string. Then just before we create the folder itself, let's use that variable dir name to construct the folder name. The first part of the folder name or the directory name will be the name of the folder we've created earlier, c colon backslash outlook files. So let's copy and paste that part. I then like to concatenate that with some kind of unique information about the email object we're looking at. So again, we've got a problem here because some of the email subjects have the same name. We've got Dell Automated Email and Dell Automated Email again. Um, some of them have very, very long winded names, which include uh, illegal characters for a particular, for a folder, for a directory. They might contain colon characters or forward slash characters, etc. So what I think we're going to do is use a little bit of uh, string manipulation to, first of all, return the formatted version of the emails date and time. So as we did earlier on, let's copy and paste this part. Then we can concatenate to that maybe the first 10 characters of the email subject. So let's say something like ampersand, or I need to incorporate a space there as well, uh, another ampersand, and then I'm going to get the 10 leftmost characters from the mi.subject. So left mi.subject, comma 10. Uh, just to make this a little easier to see, I might break this onto multiple different lines. So I've got my Outlook Files folder, and then I've got the date and time, 
and then I've got the name of the, uh, the subject or the first 10 characters from the subject. One other thing you need to consider is if the subject text contains illegal characters for a folder name, uh, if you're interested in what those characters are, you may well already know this, but there's uh, some information about this, some documentation on the Microsoft website. So these are some of the illegal characters for a directory name. So we want to make sure that ideally we haven't got any of those. I'm not going to write all of the code to exclude them, but one common one for emails, if you get an email that's a reply to something, it starts with RE followed by a colon character. So what we could do is make sure that we've replaced the colon character from the subject with, let's say, just an empty string. So within the left function, what I could do here is say, replace within the mi.subject any colon characters with an empty string and then that will get the 10 leftmost characters from uh, the replaced version of that text. Again we have some other videos which describe some of these text manipulation functions in more detail so I'll leave that to you to go and research if you need any more information about those. You can probably think of other ways to make your directory names and your email names unique and whatever suits you, uh, please feel free to go with that. This is just for the sake of demonstration. Having created that directory name though, and that's the one I'm going to go for, we need to both create the folder and then get a reference to it. So if I say set FSO dot create, sorry, beg your pardon, set DIR equals fso.create folder and then open up some parentheses and then simply pass in the directory name that I've constructed. That will return a reference to a scripting folder object into the directory variable or the dir variable. Now the problem with this is that if that folder already exists, however unlikely that might be considering we've incorporated a unique timestamp and a unique file name, uh, if that folder did already exist then this line would fail. So what we should also do is check if the directory exists, we just want to get a reference to it. And that's something else that the file system object allows us to do quite easily. We can say if fso.folder exists, we can then pass in the directory name that we've constructed. Then we can say set dir equals fso.get folder. So rather than creating it, just get a reference to it. We can then pass in the directory name again, then we can say else, so if it doesn't exist then we can create it, and then we can say end if. Finally what we can do is incorporate that directory into the save as file method. So rather than hard coding the folder path and creating a unique file name, what we'll do instead is refer to the directory's path followed by a literal backslash character, followed by the file name of the attachment. Having done all that, if I'm running the subroutine one more time, have a look in the Outlook files uh, directory, and we can see we've got a separate folder for each email in that list. If I go to the first folder, I can see that I've got my two attachments from that email, and then subsequently each other folder should contain just one. Now you can extend this basic code in a variety of different ways. So for example, you could choose to walk through the folder and subfolder structure for folders which contain subfolders. We have a video that explains how to do that that we published recently. Uh, you could choose to determine what type of attachment you've got, whether it's an Excel file or a PDF or a Word document, and create separate folders for the various types, etc, etc. There's limitless things you can do with this, I suppose. But hopefully this is enough to give you the basics and it's given you a few ideas of where you can take it from there. Thanks for watching. See you next time.